Hello, my name is Jim Van Kosky, curator of the Sports Legends of Delaware County Museum here in Radnor, Pennsylvania, located at 301 Ivan Avenue. And I'm with Rich Pagano. Rich is our chief historian. And we've been working together way back since 2002 when we developed a card set of some top athletes in Delaware County. And it's sheet is done chronologically speaking and the first person that is up top row to the left is Ted Meredith and Rich taught me an awful lot about Olympic athletes and certainly taught me a lot about Ted Meredith uh, I would like to uh, start by saying where does he fit as far as the ranking of athletes in Delaware County uh, Jimmy I'd have to put him maybe number one he uh he was the first uh, Olympian that I could find from Delaware County. He uh, participated in the 1912 Olympics. But even as a high school student, he set national high school records in, in um, two different events, the 440-yard uh, dash and the 880, which is the half a mile. And um, even after he graduated that summer, he had just graduated from high school and he ended up at the Olympics in, in Stockholm, Sweden in 1912. So um, we have quite a few Olympians and, and uh, I guess eight gold medal winners, but to me he's number one. He, he's one of the greatest runners in the history of the country, let alone Delaware County. And when I look at this picture that we have here, this is from the 1912 Olympics. And I, I'm, I'm surprised somewhat as, as the style, the um, attire that he's wearing, because it looks something like you, you'd be, you could be wearing today. Yeah. Is that and, up to date? Yeah, and uh, it's interesting, the sweater that you had on, you had these sweaters made uh, back uh, in 2002 with that same logo um, on the shirt. Um, yeah, that, the, uh, the entire track team was outfitted in the, this, this uniform in 1912. Uh, I, I want to mention that um, Ted Meredith grew up in media and actually went to media high school and from media he ended up at, at Williamson Trade School and he, he he was more than just a track athlete. He played basketball, he, he played football and um, at Williamson Trade School uh, he spent three years there and, and his degree was in bricklaying but uh, a fellow by the name of Jimmy Curtin saw his exploits in track because he was setting na national high school records. Uh, they called them scholastic records at the time. And uh, this guy, Jimmy Curtin, who was the Curran, who was the track coach at Mercersburg Academy out in western Pennsylvania, recruited him and he, he went to Mercersburg for a year. and. Uh, again at Mercersburg. He's setting world records. Uh, his big event, of course, was the half mile, the, the 880. Uh, in the Olympics, it's the eight, 800 meters. And um, he, he graduates in 1912, that spring, from Mercersburg Academy, and um, it makes the Olympic team and goes to so Stockholm, Sweden. And this is the Olympic team that had Jim Thorpe the greatest athlete of the first half of our, that century. And uh, General Patton, um, who competed in the pentathlon. So uh, it, it was uh, an exciting time for him. And he was, he was pretty young. And he ended up going to these Olympics in that uniform and, and winning two gold medals. I think we did a pretty good job in choosing that as our uh, yes. emblem, yeah. since he was our first Olympian. And since he won two gold medals in those 1912 Olympics, and you mentioned Jim Thorpe, he might even participate in him, with him, during his high school career. I'm not sure, but they were had to be in that same era. So Jim Thorpe was with Carlisle, right? So that that would be a when you think of the 1912 Olympics, I think of the Jim Thorpe Olympics. Just like when you think of the 1936 Olympics in a previous show, you think of the Jesse Owens Olympics. Right. But I don't think of George Patton. That's a surprise no. that George Patton was a 1912 Olympian. 
Yeah, and he was in that pentathlon. They're not track events. It was the equestrian, the shooting, um, the swimming, and um, they they were events that that were came about because the the military. And it's funny the 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 event that he did not do well in it was shooting, and uh, here you know he became a general and. Uh, in World War II. And, now that event you know, is still in the Olympics, correct? Yes. Yes, the pentathlon. Now Jim Thorpe won two gold medals in the pentathlon and the decathlon. The decathlon was 10 events, pentathlon was five events, but they were track events, so it was a little different than what Patton. Yeah, I think uh, one of the stories about uh, Jim Thorpe is the, the king of Sweden yeah. said that you're the greatest athlete in the world. And what was his response? Thanks, King. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what he had to say to the King of yeah. Sweden. Uh, so these are, this is what I mean about you, you just cherish that when you start to research and when you start, when you come to our museum and you find out information like this, it just enhances your whole experience. And it's, it, it's something that um, we encourage visitors to come and, and take a look. Now, we mentioned the Ventathlon in the year 2000, we had a lady from Haverford High School Yes. That, that won a silver medal in the pentathlon that was held in, let's see, was held in um, Australia, um, yeah, I, I that, believe. Yeah, that was the 2000? Yeah. Yeah, Sydney, Australia. Sydney, Australia, 2000 Olympics. Yeah. Um, it, it was interesting because um, after uh, Ted came back from those Olympics, he enrolled at the University of Pennsylvania, and he was on the track team there, setting national and world records. And he actually, in 1916, set a world record in the 440. And he would have been on the, the Olympic team again, but in 1916, because of World War I, the games were canceled. They were supposed to be in Berlin, Germany, and they were canceled. And he never got the opportunity then uh, to win more gold medals. But four years later, in, in 1920, they were in Antwerp, Belgium, and he made the team again and went to Belgium. But he, did, he competed, but he didn't win any medals. He was older and, uh, uh, I guess, not as fast as he used to be. But um, he did get back to the Olympics. Uh, but a lot of those athletes, the same thing happened in 1940 and 1944 because of World War II. The games were canceled. And then in 1916, they were canceled. Those athletes never got a chance to compete. Yeah, I remember Bob Nylon, who was the only winter Olympian, really, that Delaware County has, has produced, yeah. was not able to uh, partake in the 1940 games because yeah. of that. And he actually made the ice hockey team and uh, the United States team, but uh, they canceled those games. So those guys were training, and then next thing you know, they're in the service. Holding a rifle and overseas, <laughs> and not only the, in a war. And not only the guys, Rich, but then you had somebody like Char Moret, who oh, made yeah. the Olympic team in 1980, 80. and Jimmy Carter boycotted, and uh, those games were in Moscow, in the Soviet Union, and she never got a chance to compete. But then she did four years later in '84. But also, uh, it didn't end for Ted Meredith in 1924. He went to the games in France, in Paris, France, uh, as a reporter for a newspaper. So he covered the games there. And in 1928, they were in um, another, the, the, the next Olympics, he actually attended as an, a coach, an assistant coach on the Olympic team. Because his coach at, at Penn, Lawson Robertson, uh, was the Olympic coach, and he became his assistant. So we got a chance to go to those games uh, in 1936. He became the head track coach of the uh, Czechoslovakian team. And he, so he, got, he, he, got, he attended those Olympics too and, uh, as a coach. So he, he went to quite a few Olympics there from 1912. Um, well, I had a tremendous track and field career. And I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about uh, Jack Lemon from Delaware County, who wrote a book, Immortals of the Cinder Path. And the Cinder Path, because this is 
what they use as far as uh, run. I think they, huh. that, that was until 1964, I believe, was when they stopped using a, a cinder path. And one of the stories in this book that I really liked was his training methods with uh, Sam Riddle oh, and yeah. his father. Well, Tell us a little bit well, about that. Yeah, his father uh, trained horses, I guess, for Riddle. Yeah. And um, did he run, you may know that story a little better than me, did he run with the horses? Or well, he or? actually was uh, tied to the salty. So that's right. <laughs> he, they, the father had a unique, and the family, they, that was a track family. So just like today, you know, if you like track, you want your children to be track stars. If you're a baseball player, football player, basketball, you sort of like let them you know, follow in your footsteps. And Jim Meredith, I think that was the Ted's father's name, right. was so intent on his training methods that he actually tied his son to a sulky that was on a horse that was being trained right. by Sam Riddle, yeah. and he had to keep up. Uh, you know, he, he would probably find himself um, in trouble with the courts today yeah, with that with same the, training method. With those techniques. But, uh, yeah, I knew that his father uh, trained horses, and uh, that is an interesting story. In fact, Jack Lemon, that's the uh, only book of its kind. Uh, no one else had written uh, a biography on on Ted Meredith and uh, Jack was able to get a lot of material from Mercersburg Academy and uh, did a great job uh, on that book. I, I think I read an article one time where the people at Williamson were kind of upset because when Ted Meredith won his gold medals they were talking about him being an alumnus of Mercersburg Academy and they sort of like disregarded Williamson Trade School, yes, which would you could understand how that would sort of like uh, gripe you a little bit. Yeah, I um, when they talk about Meredith, it, well, for example, after the 1912 Olympics when he won his gold medals, they did have a parade for him in media, because that's where he, you know, he's known as a media resident, and so they had a parade right down uh, State Street in media for him, and. Uh, he was right out of uh, right out of Mercersburg, of course, at that time. But um, yeah, I think um, the um, I think there's always been a problem with three different schools here: media, Williamson Trade, and Mercersburg. Where is this guy from? They're all trying to take credit for he's a gold medal winner, world you know world record holder, world champion. So no, he's a you know, the media people, no, he went to media high school, <laughs> which he did, and Mer uh, Mercersburg, no, he's a graduate of Mercersburg. And uh, he probably spent more time at Williamson Trade because it's a three-year course for bricklaying, carpentry, whatever your, whatever trade that you take up there at, at, at uh, Williamson and not Trade. Not only that, but in, in researching his life, he, he was more than a track star at Williamson. He played other sports as yeah, well. Yeah, he played football. He played uh, he played basketball. He ran track. Uh, he was a, an outstanding all-around athlete. Yeah, Rich, you bring up a good point because we always get involved in how do you, who, who has who can claim this athlete? Because in reality, in, in Jack Lemon's book, he talks about him being born in Chester Heights. Yes, and being going to elementary school in Chester Heights. I guess they didn't have a high school, so he had to go to media, but. Chester Heights, there was no Chester Heights as far as a political unit at that time. It was part of Aston Township. Chester Heights did not, did not become a political unit until 1845. Uh, so, oh, excuse me, 19, uh, 40, 45. 1945. So in reality, Aston might even be able to claim him. So, it, so you have Aston, you have <laughs> Middletown, you have Media. Um, yeah, I think Media tries to because he actually had to go there to go to high school. Yeah. But he, I, yeah, you're right. He did not live in media. I think that's the trump so, card. I think where he went to high school is, is the trump card. So yeah. I, I think the media definitely has a legitimate claim on the, the exploits of, of Ted Meredith. And Jack Lemon, who also was from media, I'm sure that was a factor into why he wanted to write the book. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I think uh, at the end, uh, Meredith lived to, be, to 1957. He passed away. And... Uh, uh, he was actually training the Cuban track team in the late 30s. But he, he was a track coach at Penn um, 
in, until the day he passed. Uh, it's amazing sometimes how young some of these athletes are when they uh, get a gold medal. Yeah. Because I know a, another gold medal winner from Delaware County is uh, Jane Barkman. And Jane Barkman started high school late because yeah. she was involved, involved in the, the Olympics, Olympics in 68, I believe that was. So if you want to find out a little bit more about Ted Meredith and the rest of our gold medal winning Olympians, just hold on because we'll be talking about one, another one, which is Leroy Burrell. Rich, here we are after Ted Meredith talking about another track star, Leroy Burrell. Uh, in the year 2000, the Delaware County Daily Times did a sports person of the millennium. And they decided to select Leroy Burrell to have that honor, which meant that he beat out Ted Meredith. It meant that he beat out uh, Mickey Vernon. It meant that he beat out Emlyn Tunnell. It meant that he beat out John Cavaletti. So uh, being the world's fastest human in Delaware County uh, makes you a pretty good uh, athlete. Yeah, I think um, winning that, the, uh, and that was in 1991 where he set the, if you set the world record in the 100 meters, you got that title as the world's fastest human. And uh, I think that helped him with the Daily Times getting that, uh, that mention, that award. Because uh, those guys are, he and Meredith are very even with their track uh, accomplishments, I think. But one, well, it brings us to a different point. Maybe uh, the 100-meter dash is probably the most glamorous track event that there is in the Olympics. I know when, I, when the Olympics come by, in the, or next Olympics in uh, 2020, it's the one event I don't want to miss is that 100-meter dash. No, that's a good point. I think uh, the 100-meter dash and the mile. Uh, but, yeah, the 100-meter dash, it's kind of like the world heavyweight. You know, there's champions in all the other, heavy, uh, the other divisions in boxing, but that heavyweight championship is a big deal and the same with the 100 meter dash now naturally ted meredith is uh neither one of us had the opportunity to watch him compete he's part of history now not really living memory but leroy burrell is really living memory still because there's plenty of people around that have uh, watched him compete and i had the pleasure of meeting leroy burrell when my son brett was on the track team at Strathaven High School in 1994, I believe it was, when they won the state championship. And Bob Jessen, who coached Leroy Burrell, uh, had Leroy come in and talk to the Strathaven track team, and, and I was able to be there m myself. And what I found astounding was that Leroy Burrell was saying that his freshman year at the University of Houston, he tore his ACL. And I, I thought when you tore your ACL, that was it as far as your uh, Olympic uh, notoriety is concerned. And yet, through hard work, I can only imagine the amount of hard work he went through, he was able to come back and win the world's title, have the world's fastest 100, yard, yeah. 100 meter dash, not once, but twice. Yeah, that's something I, I didn't realize he had that injury because back in 1986, having that injury was a little different than having it now. They come back a lot faster, the techniques that uh, surgeons use to repair you. Um, that's an amazing uh, accomplishment right there, to come back, what, four years later and <laughs> five years later and become the uh, world's fastest human. It, it goes to prove uh, a lot of times we're giving tours and, and anybody who's interested in taking a tour just have to contact us. Uh, we talk about character education. And that's a great example of character education because you just don't re go through physical therapy without going through an awful lot of work. Without a doubt. And, and I think if you go back to, to Leroy's high school career, because he grew up in Lansdowne and he went to Penwood High School, and uh, Bob Jessen was his coach at Penwood. In fact, Bob Jessen's the only track coach in Delaware County history to, to win state champion, team state championship at two different schools. Penwood and Strathaven. Uh, but Leroy literally was a one-man track team because in 1985, his senior year, he won four gold medals at the state championships in Pennsylvania. 
uh, in the 100-yard dash, the 220-yard dash, the triple jump, and the long jump. And just he alone helped, Strath, uh, helped Penwood win the, state champ the team state championship. But what I found much later, which was a really interesting story, Mike Gill, who was the football coach at um, Penwood at the time, had Leroy come out for football. And he was extremely fast, obviously, playing receiver. But he kept dropping balls all the time in practice. And Mike didn't understand, you know, because he had pretty good hands. And they did some tests. They found out that he was blind in one eye. So he didn't have a good look at the ball when it was being thrown to him. And um, he you know, ended up not playing high school football because of that reason, because of being blind in one eye and not really knowing, you know, knowing that going <laughs> into the sport when Mike uh, tried to get him out for the team. Well, there's <laughs> a reason, because we know that a lot of our world-class athletes from Delaware County play more than, than one sport. Right. I mean, most of them will play at least two sports, sometimes like Ted Meredith, three sports. So as far as we know, that's the only high school uh, sport that Leroy played was, or did he run cross country or anything? Uh, like no, that? I, not that I know of, because uh, uh, people have asked me, didn't he, go, didn't he play football at Penwood? And uh, I said, no, he, he tried to, but uh, it didn't work out because of the, the problem he had. Because his physique, he, he looks like a running back. Yes. There's no doubt about that. He was yeah. probably about, oh, 180 pounds in high school were solid. Yeah, uh, worked very hard to achieve his goal of becoming a top-flight athlete, and and now he's helping others at the University of Houston. He's been there quite a while. Yeah, actually, when he graduated from uh, Penwood, he got a full track scholarship to the University of Houston, and uh, had an outstanding career there. Was the uh, national long jump champion, national 100-meter uh, champion, and um, from there, um, you know, he, he uh, set that world record in 1991, and then 92, he makes the Olympic team and goes to Barcelona, Spain, and wins a gold medal in, in the relay, the 4 by 100 relay. I know one of the big thrills of Joe Cirilli's life, who was the executive director of the Delaware County Athletes Hall of Fame, is when Leroy Burrell was going to be inducted into that organization, not only did he come, but he brought the entire relay yes. team with him. Yeah, that year, I, I, I believe uh, it was um, in 1993, we were inducting Leroy, and they were, the whole relay team was there that weekend at the Penn Relays, and the 4x100 relay team set a world record. And then later, he came to the banquet to get <laughs> inducted, and he brought Carl Lewis with him who was one of the most popular and best athletes in the world. And Carl was taking pictures with people and signing autographs. It was outstanding. I think he took some of the limelight away from, uh, from Leroy Burrell, but uh, it, was a, it was a great night. The, uh, I don't think the, I, I, I believe, yes, I believe the whole relay team came because they had just been at the Penn Relays. So I know Joe was so excited about that, he, ju he just couldn't believe it because that, you work hard to put these events on and then sure. <clears throat> you hope that your uh, prominent athletes are going to show and, and not only does he show, but he, he brings probably the most popular track and field athlete in the country at that time with him. Yeah, I was there. It was a great night. It was one of the best nights that uh, they, uh, they ever had in, uh, in putting on that banquet. Um, I think also the following year, he broke the world 100-meter record again in, in 1994, uh, Leroy, by maybe a couple hundredths of a, a second. Um, it was his record from 91, and uh, he ended up doing it twice, where, where he's setting a world record in the, in the 100. I, I think it was, uh, I saw from the video clip, 9.85 yes. was the time. And the other one was 9.88. Yeah. So, so, and he was the really? happiest person I've ever seen. When you look at the video clips, when he broke that world's record, I guess after you finish, you look up. You know what it reminds me of, going to a different sport? Uh, when, a, when a batter 
has a close play, and he wants to look up to see if see the if score it. had it as a hit or an error. But Leroy Burrell just took a glance at the clock, to, wanted to find out if he did break the world's record, and then he started doing cartwheels. I mean, <laughs> it with a smile on yeah. his face. Uh, he was certainly one that um, really showed his exuberance. It re it's somewhat like Billy Johnson after he scored a touchdown doing a dance in the end zone. So uh, that could be a characteristic of Delaware County athletes that they don't mind letting you know how happy they yeah. are when they achieve their goal. Well, I think two years later he really was disappointed because he had a he had an injury and he didn't make he would have made the 1996 Olympic team, but uh, and they were going to be held in Atlanta, Georgia, right in in our own country, but. Well, so mm -hmm. many Olympic hopefuls, uh, their dreams are squashed because of uh, injury. Yeah. I'm George Sidner, who's at our museum at 301 Ivan Avenue. Hopefully everybody gets a chance to come out. Was a sp uh, sprinter in the 50-yard dash. Oh, uh, the 60-yard dash. 60 he was a world, uh, world rec record holder, yeah. but he got injured prior to the Olympic, uh, I guess, 56, somewhere 1956, around there. 1956, yeah. So these stories and others you'll be able to find out a lot of information. And again, if you have a group, uh, go to our website, sportslegendsofdelawarecounty.com. I hope the phone number is on the screen as well, 610-909-4919, 610-909-4919. And to really uh, add to your enjoyment, you could either have Rich Pagano or myself give you a tour of our seven galleries to really find out what we have to offer.